Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Scott Beadle with Big Fox News. Bitter cold weather is creating some dangerous conditions across much of the nation, including the Twin Tiers. We begin with your Big Fox forecast tonight. Meteorologist Kim Walker is tracking it all off the top. Well, we're expecting about three inches by the end of the day, and there could be some more snow showers tomorrow. And then we're going to see some clearing by the afternoon, so partly sunny uh, Wednesday afternoon. But behind this cold front, the winds will start to pick up, so our wind chills will cause those temperatures to feel like 10 below to 14 degrees below as we head into the afternoon. And we're going to stay below freezing through the weekend and into uh, Sunday afternoon. I think that's when we start to warm up to above freezing finally, uh, but we have to wait until the weekend. But this cold front is coming through along with it. Some snow that will continue through tonight and also into tomorrow. But behind it, those cold winds will cause those temperatures to feel so much colder. Tonight, though, we drop down into the single digits. Our lows will be around 6 degrees in Elmira and also in Corning. We're going to have a southwest wind around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, those wind chills will cause those temperatures to feel about 5 degrees degrees cooler and then tomorrow our high will only be around 12 degrees in Elmira and also in Corning 14 in Watkins Glen. There could be a few snow showers early in the day, but that will give way to a little bit clearer conditions by the afternoon. But even with uh, some peaks of sunshine, temperatures really won't warm up all that much. We're going to, get, going to get a little bit colder by your Thursday. Partly sunny skies. Temperatures only climb up to around 10 degrees. Look at those overnight lows well below zero and it's going to feel so much colder than that because of the breeze. We finally warm up though as we head to the weekend, still right around freezing on Saturday, but then a warm surge of air comes our way by the end of the weekend with highs around 45 degrees, but we do have chances of rain as we head into early next week, but at least we'll be above freezing. Scott. All right, thank you, Kim. With those extreme cold temperatures this week, pet owners should plan for those harsh conditions. Pets should not be left outside for extended periods of time during the cold. It's also important to remember that in cold temperatures, when water freezes and is less easy to access, your pet still needs something to drink. Make sure your pet does have access to a non-frozen water supply. Also, antifreeze, which often collects on driveways and roads, will smell and taste good to your pet, but it is highly poisonous and can be deadly. The colder it gets, the more cautious we need to be, the more time that we need to limit outdoors. Above freezing temperatures, you need to take into consideration the breed of the dog, the age, the health. There are many factors to take into consideration, but when you're looking above freezing temperatures, dogs like Huskies, dogs like Newfoundlands, they're more adapted to that weather. However, when we're going into these below freezing temperatures, I mean, it with the wind chill, that is a huge factor as well. Um, we really need to be cautious and keep an eye on all pets, no matter what the breed. If dogs are outside or any animal is outside, you have a feral colony of cats, the best thing to use is straw. So you wanna use straw in a completely insulated environment. So you can use like foam board, pack it full of straw, um, blankets are a horrible idea to use because what happens is they collect moisture and then that moisture in turn freezes. Another tip for pets in the winter is to consider buying pet-friendly ice melt for the sidewalks. Rock salt used on sidewalks may irritate your pet's foot pad, so you might want to rinse their feet after going out for a walk. New York State Police are investigating after a deadly shootout involving a trooper near the Pennsylvania border. Officials say the trooper was attempting to pull over a car last night that was connected to a motor vehicle complaint. Police said that driver sped off before eventually stopping along Route 17 near Binghamton. They say the suspect opened fire and the trooper returned fire. The unidentified suspect was killed in that exchange. The trooper went to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. We'll have more news right after this. Bend County Deputy is recognized by the County Legislature for exceptional heroism that went above and beyond the call of duty. Deputy Joshua Day was named Deputy of the Year by the New York State Sheriff's Association in Albany last week. 
The honor stemmed from Day's efforts during that standoff that killed Trooper Nicholas Clark back on July 2nd. County Sheriff Jim Allard says Day was among the first on the scene. Day was shot at by a suspect who had barricaded himself in a house. Day was joined by Clark. As the two moved closer to the house, Clark was shot. Day returned fire and pulled Clark to safety and began emergency medical care while calling for help. Sheriff Allard says Day's actions prevented that suspect from leaving the area, potentially saving the lives of others. Day is only the second deputy from the county to be honored by the state association. Delmira City leaders pass a new budget that has some good news for residents. The budget, which was passed unanimously, included no property tax increase for the new year. Last year, residents of the city of Elmira saw a steep increase, 17%. The city credits the shared services agreement with the county for the steady tax rate. Thanks for joining us on Big Fox News. Have a great night.